Hello and welcome to the Money Mile. This one is a special for all the women out there, whether you're an entrepreneur or are otherwise affected by, and you will be by the change in tax regime. Here's a quick couple of pointers to watch out for when GST comes into final action and place. And joining me to answer those questions is Gautam Khattar of PwC. Gautam, quickly, uh, in terms of the dates and the rates, a quick status check for anyone who wants to know about GST. So the date is uh, final. It's 1st of July. Um, the government is really put, putting all their bets on the 1st of July, so I don't see it changing at this point in time. The rates are final. Uh, two, the rate schedule have been put across. There may be slight tweaking of some of the rates uh, probably in the next week, 10 days, but largely uh, there are four buckets. There is a 5% uh, bucket which has day-to-day uh, -day essential items. Could be a rice or a, a branded food, etc. Could be bread milk. Could be there. There is also a gold which is at a 3%. Uh, then you have a 12% category which again has a lot of electronic items which could be a mobile phone which is there and other electronic items. Uh, the other category is 18%. Uh, strangely biscuits are falling in 80% uh, but yeah a host of products are under 18% and the other category is 28 uh, the highest rate. Uh, the 28 actually started off with a demerit rate, but today if you see a lot of products uh, are under 28, which could be the white products like a fridge or an AC, which is under 28. So that's what it is. Over and above uh, these rates, there is also a compensation cess, which goes as high as 15 So government has specified certain products like aerated drinks, uh, cars, on which there will be a compensation cess uh, going up to 15%. So that would be a 28 plus 15, which would be 43% for cars. Quick word on change in life for two categories of women entrepreneurs. One, those who were considered extremely small entrepreneurs, uh, didn't even have a sales tax number and had, you know, uh, sales maybe with a turnover of 10 to 15 lakhs. And then for women who are essentially e-commerce entrepreneurs, how does the landscape change? So uh, at a 10 to 15 lakhs, uh, one, they don't need to again get into, so you are not in the GST net. So you don't need to register and undertake compliances uh, because the threshold is 20 lakhs and this 20 lakh is for Pan India. So if you are looking at 10, 15 lakhs, that should be the turnover, not in a particular state, but on Pan India basis. So if the threshold is less, it is all right. You not, life doesn't change too much on the output side, but there is, uh, when you're buying or if you're running, um, from a rented place, as an example, there is a service tax today which is 15%. Uh, that increases to 18. So some of the services which you are buying today, uh, those cost is likely to increase from a 15 to 18%. So that would be a slight increase in cost uh, for entrepreneurs which are not in the GST net. And e-commerce? Okay, e-commerce, uh, yes, uh, again e-commerce, there is going to be a, a fair amount of compliances. Life is going to change a lot. Uh, to start with, uh, if you're selling out of e-commerce, the uh, the marketplace, uh, the owner of the e-commerce platform is going to deduct taxes, uh, you know, when they're making new payments. So you are also somewhere, uh, your name would flash in the net uh, or in the government uh, tax portals. So, so therefore, the onus is that everyone would be more of a tax compliant uh, person. Uh, today, e-commerce, uh, there was rate arbitrage uh, on a lot of products, some of the, depending on, depending which, state on the which state you are on. So e-commerce could be selling from some of the states where there was this uh, rate arbitrage. That goes away. So therefore, uh, there is a level playing field which happens. So while there is a level playing field, the downside being that there is increased compliances. Well, for the for, government, for there's the an government. upside, actually. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Between now and the 1st of July, got the many do's and don'ts that you put out for entrepreneurs or women at large in terms of keeping this GST change in mind? So, uh, again, entrepreneurs, uh, for this, largely what you'll have to look at the technology. So, to the extent you are covered under GST, there is going to be a fair amount of compliances. These compliances, as you go along, it's not something which could be done manually. So, you need to have an interface uh, a ERP system or a solution which interfaces with the government solution. So that needs to be there to enable you to undertake compliance. So that's something which everyone, if not right now, but as you go upgrade along, your upgrade your technology, the focus has to be on technology. The other aspect being any contracts, you know, on the input and output side, any open and long-term contracts which you have, you may need to relook at those, look at the tax rates which are coming in, 
and uh, probably redefine the pricing based on the revised tax rate. So this will be again relevant. The third aspect being transition. You know, so if you are having goods in stock right now, uh, how are you going to deal with? Uh, because today the tax rate, a typical VAT rate on any product could be a 12 and a half or a 15 percent. If you're getting into an 18 and 28 percent, what is the thought process? Uh, you know, you need to charge that to the customer because you need to deposit it with the government. But is it going to be out of your pocket or you're getting support from the original manufacturer is, is a discussion which you need to have. There are also rules which the government has come about for transition giving you deep credit. So you need to factor those uh, through. Thank you very Thank much for that, you. Gautam. That's uh, Money Mile coming out for the women entrepreneurs women taxpayers. I hope this clears up some of the doubts you have in mind, but please write in to us with anything else and we are happy to help.